where it's going to break and so on. So step three, we do what is called a load analysis. And this involves FBD, Newton's laws, summation of forces equal to 0, summation of moments equal to 0 because it is static loading. So let us do this. What I would like you to do, so the way the best way to for you to follow along with this is to first draw this picture, okay. Pause the pause the thing, draw this picture so that you have it on your side, okay. Then what I want you to do is draw me a free body diagram that will be useful for me to find the internal forces in the two wires B D and C D C E. Okay, they are both 4 mm in diameter. So draw me the draw me the free body diagrams which will allow me to determine those two things. Okay. So pause, do it, and then you can look at my look at my solution. If you don't do it, it's just like watching an exercise video. You will not get stronger, only I will get better. Okay. So the way best way to do this is what? Pause, try it by yourself, and then compare with my answer. Okay. So let me get back here and I am going to now draw this free body diagram so my free body diagram for this i know hope you paused and you drew it by yourself so now i'm going to draw this free body diagram and it's going to look like this got this right now write me the equations of equilibrium for the system again pause do it yourself then come back and take a look this is the best way to learn okay so i'm hoping you had you had passed and write, done it by yourself now i'm going to show you what i get so this one remember this dimension was 2 this is 2 and that's 2 so i will get summation of forces in the y direction sorry in the x direction immediately gives me rx equal to 0 that is equation 1 summation of forces in the y direction equal to 0 gives me f1 and I am going to draw my usual symbols you know what these things mean right upwards positive f1 plus f2 minus sorry plus ry minus 3 kilo Newton Notice I converted kilonewtons to newtons because our standard units is newtons, our standard length is millimeters. So we will try to work everything in newtons and millimeters. Correspondingly, our standard stresses are in megapascals. So we will write everything in megapascals. Okay. So this is equation number two. And then summation of moments about R. This will give me. 2 times F1 minus 4 times 3000 plus 6 times F2 equal to 0. Okay. Notice and we are done. We have used summation of forces, summation of moments and this is it. So we notice that there is we have three equations and sorry four unknowns oh sorry two equations and three unknowns that is f1 f2 r y 
Okay. So at this stage you cannot really solve it because you have two equations and three unknowns. No need to panic. It just means that the system is statically, this is what we mean by statically indeterminate. Okay, so what this means is that you cannot find this out by looking at statics alone, you have to look at deflections. So that is our step 4. I am going to just call it deflection analysis. There are various names for this. This is what I am going to call it. but. Sometimes it is called compatibility analysis. Sometimes it is called kinematical constraints. Right? So what it is is that we are now going to look at the deflections alone. We looked at in the previous thing, we looked at forces alone. Now we are going to look at deflections alone. To understand what we are talking about, let us go back to our picture and let us ask the following question. Is it evident to you that the deflections at the points B and C, that is this point, point B and point C are somehow linked, they are connected. Right? To make it very evident, imagine do you think C can deflect by 100 millimeters and B can deflect by only 1 millimeter? Do you think that's possible? Yeah, do you think it's possible or no? You think, yeah, it's not possible, right? Because then what will happen is this bar will have to bend a lot. So if I assume that the bar is rigid, then is it obvious to you that C has to deflect more than B? You cannot have, uh, you cannot have. In fact, what we are going to do is we are going to use the condition that the bar is rigid to find the extra criteria. We will we'll, we'll relate the def deflections. Okay? This sounds kind of bizarre stuff, but I want you to think about this. Okay? What we are saying is that somehow the way in which the two, two, two cables can move is constrained, it's restricted by the presence of the rigid bar. So that's what we are going to look at. So let's and you'll, it'll be, this will become evident to you after, after we draw it. So the core idea is bar B A C is rigid. That means, so let me draw this bar. So initial shape looks like this, right? What happens after it deflects? because of the load, is it obvious to you that it will become like this? Right? Here is the location C, here is the location B and here is the original cable and what happens is it gets extended like this. This cable got extended like this. Okay, this is the deflection of this cable which is U2, this is the deflection of this cable which is U1. Okay, and what I want you to realize is this is a matter of trigonometry. Similar triangles. So this point is called R, this is the pivot point. So the most difficult aspect